We've got the latest on the coronavirus right now. We have new numbers for you. So nearly one and a half million infected with the virus, which has killed nearly 88,000 people in the United States. Let's check on our state right now. Nearly 1,000 people have died from COVID-19 with nearly 18,000 confirmed cases, less than 7% uh, of tests that have been happening around the state have come out positive. Leavenworth's mayor says there are too many people in the downtown corridor to observe social distancing guidelines. So starting this weekend, he's shutting down Front Street to cars. The closure means the stretch will be pedestrians only. 8th, 9th and 10th streets will remain open to cars. This change will be in effect until further notice, but the city does note that one lane of Front Street may remain available for emergency vehicles, so be prepared for that. And when restaurants start reopening for dining, they will not be required to take down customers' names or contact information. Governor Jay Inslee announced the reversal yesterday. The governor says, quote, we are asking visitors to voluntarily provide contact information in case of COVID-19 exposure. We only need information for one person per household. If we learn that you may have been exposed to COVID-19 during your visit, the information will be shared with public health officials only, end quote. Well, giving up information is no longer required, but the governor is still asking restaurants to keep a daily log of people who are willing to provide it for another 30 days just to hold on to. Hundreds of hospital workers are in for a treat this morning. Alaska Airlines will deliver fresh Copper River salmon meals to Swedish Hospital, where workers have been on the front lines of coronavirus. King 5's Kira Elfallen, she's live at Swedish Ballard this morning. You were at SeaTac Airport for the arrival of the salmon yesterday, and um, others are involved in this. How, how exciting is this opportunity, Kira? Yeah, good morning. Well, Alaska Airlines ploy employees couldn't be more excited about this opportunity to give back. They're just really glad that they're able to do this. And it's not just them. It's also Trident, Ocean Beauty and Copper River uh, Seafoods as well. They're all a part of this. So yesterday, over 9000 pounds of Copper River salmon arrived at Alaska Airport. A lot of salmon. Uh, this is actually an annual event that attracts top chefs from all across the world. But because of coronavirus event, organizers decided to take a different approach this year. 200 hospital workers will be the first to enjoy the season's first catch. They're working tirelessly to make sure that they're keeping people safe and healthy. And it's just a, a, a real honor to be able to serve those who have been serving us. Chef Tom Douglas will also be grilling food for good to raise money for Food Lifeline since so many families could use the meals right now. So Alaska Airlines pilots and flight attendants are going to be here at Swedish Hospital in Ballard at noon delivering these meals. Uh, Chef Tom Douglas is going to be grilling up some of this food, as we said, for a good cause. And then fans, fish lovers will be able to join in on this on these festivities on Sunday. Uh, but if you want to pre order some of his delicious meals, all you have to do is text the word salmon to the number on your screen. That is 206-448-4545, and we will send you a link. And again, all proceeds go to Food Lifeline. Just a really great cause. I'm live here in Seattle, Kira L. Fallen, King 5 News. Kira makes the belly and the heart feel good. Thank you so much. All right, so they hoped uh, it would be a busy summer travel season, and now airports are nearly empty. Payne Field is temporarily suspending Passenger service after a drastic drop in scheduled flights. King 5's Ted Land is in Everett with more. The terminal is empty, the doors are locked, and the arrivals and departures board is completely blank. That's how quiet it is here at the terminal at Payne Field tonight. It's been like that for weeks. Before the coronavirus pandemic, the passenger terminal served 24 daily departures. Now there are just five daily departures, sometimes even fewer than that. So Snohomish County and Propeller Airports, which operates the terminal, are announcing that they'll suspend passenger service from May 22nd through the end of July. They say this break will actually allow them to speed up some much needed airport repairs, which were previously scheduled out over four months. We just spoke with the CEO of Propeller Airports. This decision was in the works since November, well before any of this happened. And we, we had scheduled to start it in June and it would have gone through September. But now we can do it in two months instead of potentially four. So it's, it's quicker, it's actually more cost effective 
and it's better for the passenger experience. The operators of this airport say they think once uh, people start flying in large numbers again, once traffic starts returning to I-5, that this airport will remain a viable alternative to SeaTac Airport. The reason why people travel out of here is to avoid all that traffic and the long waits at SeaTac. So they think once people start returning to their routines, whenever that may be, they will still want to use Payne Field. In Everett, Ted Land, King 5 News. Ted, thank you. Well, the governor's restrictions on dental offices are in effect through Monday, and if no additional orders are issued, it could mean patients will be welcomed back next week. But dental hygienists tell King 5's Natalie Swaby they have concerns about reopening. During Inslee's stay home, stay healthy order, dental offices are considered an essential business, but they've been restricted for urgent visits only. Now the offices are getting ready to reopen and resume a full scope of care. Dental hygienists asking for anonymity out of fear of losing their jobs emailed their concerns. One pointed out coronavirus can linger in the air for as long as three hours. How then can you protect the patient, she wrote. Another email said dentists are moving forward with opening offices with short supply of masks, asking staff to reuse masks. This email ended with the words, scared to go back to work. What about hygienists who just say they don't think it's safe yet? Jennifer Zabarscheck, president of the Washington Dental Hygienist Association, says she's heard from dental hygienists who say their offices are ready and from others who say they're nowhere close and haven't even had meetings about it. So she's not aware of what the protocols are going to be, what type of PPE is going to be provided, or how she's expected to complete the treatment for the patients. When dental offices do reopen, you could see plexiglass protecting the front counter and the air of the waiting room over. Instead, you'd wait outside until the office is ready to see you. Temperature checks and coronavirus tests for patients before the appointment are also being discussed. The urgent concern is that there's not enough personal protective equipment. And that it's not of the level that's needed for the types of procedures that we do that create aerosols. And as we know, with this virus, it can be passed through um, aerosols and droplets. That's why some dental hygienists say they want to hold off on reopening and are desperately seeking direction on the safest path forward. In addition to making sure there's enough PPE, the American Dental Association says reopening dental offices needs to be a team approach with lots of communication. In Seattle, Natalie Swaby, King 5 News.